Driving stick is just fun. You have to be smooth and maintain positions and pedal pressure. If it seems wrong, it probably is. If you whip on and off the gas, let's see if I can do it. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh God. What's going on people? I thought I would do a revised video on how to drive a stick shift or especially just good tips relating to that. So today I'm driving my 1984 Porsche 944. It's just a great old little sports car, uh, one that's super reliable and I just enjoy having as kind of a everyday classic. Obviously a five speed manual gearbox, very basic bare bones sports car. And at my first video I did a year ago was also in a 944. That was a red one, but this particular one happens to be the one I've always wanted with the rare color combination. You guys can see the wacky Porsche Pasha fabric and I've got this fluffy seat cover because it's winter and cold. But uh, let's go for a drive and just talk about this. I think this is gonna be helpful for young people. Um, and uh, for all the Europeans that are going to be snarky right now and going, I'm not gonna take shifting advice from a Yank or an American. Um, okay, don't. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. This one should be a little bit nicer too for the sake of the video. It's got a louder exhaust, which I think will make it easier to hear exactly what's going on with the engine. Um, I gotta tell you, driving stick is just fun, okay? There's times when it's a little bit of pain in the butt, you know, if you're in LA traffic, obviously if you're in New York, maybe not the most fun thing in the world, especially you got a heavy clutch and it can get really old sitting there for a long time in traffic. But for the majority of driving, having just a cool sports car that you like with a good stick shift, good transmission, it's very enjoyable. It makes driving a lot more fun and frankly keeps me more um, into the moment and being a safer driver because I'm more well connected. I also find I don't get as bored as easily driving, so I think I end up being safer and staying awake more. And uh, lastly, with a stick shift, it's a little easier to tell how fast you're going. So it makes it easier to have fun and not necessarily get busted for speeding because I find automatic cars or sports cars so boring. You have to speed like crazy to have any fun. And then that doesn't help your <laughs> driver's license or your uh, wallet getting tickets. So down to shifting, I wanna talk about it. Now the, the biggest thing for young people is getting going, just starting from a dead stop. So right now we're on level level ground. I don't have to worry about rolling backwards if you're going up a hill. That's something else to talk about and you can use a parking brake for assistance with that. But right now I'm sitting in traffic. I've got my foot off the clutch and it's in neutral. So I'm put it, pushing the clutch, engage first. I'm not going to rip it in. I'm not going to jam it in. I'm just going to put it in with what the gearbox wants. You got to kind of be nice to it. Firmly do the actions you need uh, and make it happen. And when you pull away from the traffic light, you don't need to rev the heck out of it and then slip the clutch for a long period of time that's over wearing it. But you also don't wanna do it super low end, start letting the clutch out that the engine bogs or stall. So as a general rule of thumb, when you pull away from either a stoplight or a stop sign, you're only going to use the amount of RPM on the engine or the amount of power that you need to take off. And as you get better and better, you'll be able to use less if that makes sense. Now, it'll be another video where I'm gonna talk about doing things like hole shots, and I've got other videos relating to shifting and downshifting and upshifting and all that, but I really just wanted to go over the basics. So, in coming up to a stop line, like I just did here, some other young people have asked me relating to it, do you just push it in neutral, uh, or excuse me, push in the clutch and just like coast up with the engine going back to idle and braking? Or do you downshift, you know, like you're in a motorcycle or in a race car? Or if you're driving along at 55 miles an hour, do you just push in the clutch, stick it in first gear until you get there? All right, well, the last one, don't do that. One of the fastest ways to wear out a gearbox and just screw it up, destroy the synchros is people who literally will be driving down the road at 55 miles an hour, they know they've got a 90 degree corner coming up, which in general in cars is a second gear corner. 
So they'll push in the clutch and just jam it in second, even though the car's still doing like 50 miles an hour, they'll break up to it and uh, you know make the turn, then let out the clutch and go. You don't wanna do that because what's happening is in a gearbox, when you're moving down the road and your tires are spinning, <clears throat> Parts of the internals of the gearbox are spinning the speed of the roadway. For instance, in the case of the uh, Porsche here, it has a transaxle, so the ring and pinion, which drives the shafts to the wheels, is in the transmission. Uh, and those are directly connected to a lot of the gears and spinning. In the case of a front en engine car, a typical one, where the gearbox is up there and the trans Trans, or excuse me, the differential is in the back, that's still happening because that drive shaft there is always spinning. So I'm going on a little bit longer, but you need to be selecting gears that relate to how fast you're actually going. So if you're pulling up to us, if you're coming up to a stop or you're coming up to a slow corner, you don't just push in the clutch immediately and jam it in that low gear that you need. You need to wait. Okay, so as one example, like I got to slow down, I got slow traffic. I will literally just take my foot off the brake or take my foot off the gas. I'm in fifth gear right now and I'll just start gently braking with it in gear. And that's effectively engine braking for just normal driving. Sorry, I'm actually in traffic so I can't demonstrate perfectly right now. But if you're leaving it in, say, the gear that you're in, the RPM are coming down and maybe when you get to 1500 RPM, that's when you push in the clutch and let it go to idle. But if you wait too long and you come to a stop or right before you come to stop and your car starts shuddering, <laughs> that's because with the clutch out and it in gear, you have a direct mechanical connection from the engine to the transmission, to your differential, to your wheels. So you will stall it or start bucking your engine. So, you know, if I'm slowing down and it's still in a top gear and I'm coming to a stop, stop sign, stop light, whatever, uh, the, the laziest, easiest thing to do, just normal driving, is just leave it in the gear you were in, start, you know, let off the, you know, gas, the car starts engine braking a little and slowing down. And then you can just gently brake until you get to where you're at. And then when you slow down enough, you push in the clutch, just like that, okay? And I gotta stop the light coming up here, but I just wanted to illustrate that while I was still yapping. Now, the other thing that you'll see me doing is, if it's got a long way to go, I downshifted in a fourth, and now I'm kind of downshifting in a third. I don't need to do that. It was a little bit of fun. The other thing too is if you have a stop light that's there and you don't necessarily know when it's gonna turn green, if you just leave it in fifth gear and you're slowing down and now let's say you're doing 20 miles an hour and you think you're gonna stop but all of a sudden it turns green and everybody needs to go, now suddenly you need to downshift to either probably second or third gear so that you can accelerate with traffic and go. If you leave it in fifth, then you're not really ready for it. So there's times like in traffic where you'll want to downshift and start selecting gears that are more appropriate for the slower speed you're going so that, that you then can take off. As another note I wanna mention, you see me idling here at this stoplight and I put it in neutral and let the clutch out. That, that there is a lot of talk and argument and do you just keep holding the clutch in if you're at a light? or do you put it in neutral and let the clutch out? Well, I'll answer that by saying it's a judgment call. Now, the reason why there's a judgment call there is it has to do with wear on your car and most specifically, the throwout bearing. So when you push in the clutch pedal, there is either a mechanical connection via um, rods or cables to something called a fork that pushes a bearing that pushes in the diaphragm on the clutch, and that's what physically disengages it, okay? Or, of course, you have a hydraulic um, master and slave cylinder, which is not PC. We'll probably end up having to change those names one day uh, to, push in your, to push in your throwout bearing. So that throwout bearing, when it is pushing in the clutch diaphragm, it is spinning at engine RPM. So every time you push in that clutch, that bearing is moving. And in, I would say most cars, I know there are some that aren't like this, I can't really think which one's off the top of my head, but in most cars, the throwout bearing is not touching the clutch at all times. So when I have the clutch out, that throwout bearing is here, and let's say this is the clutch, it's just spinning and spinning and spinning, the throwout bearing is not, because every time you push it, you're putting a lot of force in it, it's spinning, you're wearing it. So if I just sat here 
with my foot on the clutch, I would be wearing my throw out bearing and pushing the clutch and wearing all those linkages and I don't have to. Um, so, and I know this light's gonna take a little while and I don't really feel like pushing it in. So I'm just waiting. You wanna be a little more attentive if you're not in gear uh, or I don't know, there's people chasing you or you're about to get carjacked and you wanna get out of here or something, you know what I mean? So you might wanna be in gear if you think you're gonna have to go real quickly. But I would say if you're gonna be waiting enough time that it seems silly that you still have your foot on the clutch, you're pushing it in, then you probably want to think ahead and shift it into neutral, make sure you're in neutral, let the clutch out reasonably. So that's, that's just a little bit of an example there. Now, the other thing relating to driving stick shift, which frankly makes people a much better driver and is paramount if you're gonna become a racing driver or sports car driver, is with the stick shift, you have a direct mechanical connection from the engine to the wheels. So if you're in first or second gear, such as when I w went around that corner, uh, if you let off the gas, it'll start engine braking. The engine wants to slow down. It's, it's a big unit and it's trying to make the car slow down. And if I get on the throttle, I'll accelerate. Now that's, you're thinking, Casey, that's, well, duh. I mean, I knew that, but there's a difference. An aut a true automatic transmission effectively has a fluid coupling. Now, I know there's a lot of variations of that and you guys are gonna comment. However, an automatic transmission coasts more. So you can be a lot dumber with your foot on an automatic car and it feels smooth. Whereas on a stick shift car, you have to be smooth and maintain positions and pedal pressure to continue that flow. So I'll give you an example. There's people around there are gonna probably think I'm a horrible driver if I do this. For young people, if you're pulling away from a stoplight or let's say you're in a parking lot and your car starts to buck, if you whip on and off the gas, let's see if I can do it. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh God, I look like an idiot. <laughs> you ever done that? Okay. Well, that's what I mean about that smooth foot control. So you're pushing the gas, you know, just a little bit like this and you're rolling off, off the clutch like this to accelerate and you're holding it, right? If you just go ahead and whip off the gas and then back on, like, like basically a nervous new driver in a stick shift car, you're going to cause a degrading oscillation in the drivetrain and effectively, the gearbox, the drive shaft, the half shafts that go to the wheels, they're all made of metal. And metal are different kinds of springs. And I know that sounds silly, but you start feeling like you're on the end of a spring for a reason. That's what's happening effectively. So if you bounce a spring like this, right? If you've got a spring with a little weight at the end and you get it going, bouncing up and down, what do you do to stop it? You have to smooth it out and be real smooth with how you hold the spring with the weight. And driving a car is exactly the same way with the throttle. And that goes for any kind of gear, which is also a hugely important tip for driving high horsepower, high torque cars. Most especially like my Dodge Viper or the V12 Aston Martin, the old stick shift one. When you've got a high horsepower car, you now have the ability for just with your throttle to break the tires loose from adhesion. The, the engine makes so much power that you can just spin the tires at will, at will at a lot of time, which you don't want to do. So in that circumstance, you have to be thinking of the traction of the tires, but also maintaining a very smooth on your throttle. Uh, and in, and I'm, I'm uh, going on a big tangent here, but in the sake of power sliding higher horsepower cars, one of the biggest mistakes that people do when they're learning to power slide is they get nervous and let off the gas early, then the car bites and hooks, and then it gets ugly and bad things happen. Where it's sort of like you gotta stay in the gas, but not too much and hold it and keep the spin going to be smooth. So even doing things like that require a certain decisive confidence and smoothness. So where I'm going with this is guys, just the basics here, driving stick shift, super fun, super rewarding. And actually with older cars, stick shift cars, get better fuel mileage than do automatics. They just, they have less drag. So that's kind of a plus. And in the older days before dual sequential clutches and all kinds of fancy automatics that shift real fast and everything, stick shift cars were faster accelerating than an automatic, generally speaking. And they're just way more fun. So there's a lot of value to having a car like this, but the biggest tip I can give you is 
if you you need to understand what's happening when you are driving a car like what what do the controls do what what's actually happening going on here because if you feel a clunk or a deceleration or something like that you really just need to think about it and you will be able to self-diagnose what you've done wrong or what you could do better all right so if when you're first learning to change gears and you are upshifting if when you change gears there's a slight deceleration right before you go well that means that you let off the gas first then pushed in the clutch so you need to push in the clutch a little sooner in the timing um, and what the reason it decelerates is because you let off the gas for a second before you let in the clutch and that's why that can get jerky or the other way around if all of a sudden when you shift gears there's an acceleration burst like this that's because you didn't let off the gas enough for the RPM to come down you, you held it up there and then you just let out the clutch and that's effectively like popping the clutch um, you know when you're gonna launch a car from a dead stop and that's why you might get a sudden acceleration force like that but those are just real basic things that you can self-diagnose when you're driving a car and one of the other nice things about a stick shift is it's hard to keep driving the car badly unless you're just clueless with what's going on because a stick shift car will tell you what you're doing wrong so if it seems wrong it probably is and as a note your actions the amount of rpms you use the amount of shifting really just comes down to what is the most efi efficient way to get the job done if you're slipping the clutch a long way and you're really revving it up and everything and you don't need to do that well that's not efficient so don't do that as much or if the car is dying and you need a little more do it just vibe with the car and it will literally tell you what it needs and then of course when you can become proficient enough at driving like that that's when you start getting into little better techniques like you know downshifting at speed uh, toe heel downshifting uh, you guys really don't need to worry about double clutching or single clutching that means when you push in the clutch one time to shift that's single clutching you push the clutch in twice that's called double clutching we're not going to talk about that right now that has everything to do with synchronizing the the speed of the transmission to the next gear you're going to be in not really necessary in a modern synchron mesh box uh, as another note i want to say something else for all the trolls out there that saw me put my hand in like this and turn like this from the dead stop um, I well realize that every single racing instructor on the planet, as well as every single driver's ed on the planet, tell you not to do that for a multitude of reasons. One of which, if you do this and the airbag goes off, it breaks your arm and sticks your arm in your face. And the biggest one is it's not efficient. But the reason I did it is because this car has no power steering. And I was at a dead stop, so I needed the extra uh, leverage for a moment to drive it. Yeah, sure, I could do that, but no. There are certain circumstances, for instance that, where it's acceptable to do the arm hook type thing just once. So I just wanted to say that because I know there's gonna be about a million people say that and it's really annoying. <laughs> I realize you drive a really fancy new car with really great power steering, but not everybody has that. But I will say this, that, that is a terrible thing to do when you're actually driving and moving on the road. When the car is actually moving, it is easier to steer. You guys probably know that, especially everybody who ever has a non-power steering car. But for instance, right now, if I needed to turn, it's, it's, it's harder for me to turn the wheel to uh, go like that. So I may just hook it from a dead stop if the power steering isn't so great. And actually, now that I think of it, I'm full of crap. I forgot this car actually does have power steering. <laughs> it's not over boosted. My other 944 didn't have it. So maybe I'm just being a wuss. Anyway, guys, I hope this is a little bit helpful for you new drivers out there. Share it with anybody. Uh, but basically, let the car talk to you and be efficient. Uh, but driving a manual transmission is a heck of a lot of fun. And nowadays, for if you can find them, a lot of people can't drive stick. So sometimes you get a really good smoking deal on a manual transmission car. You'll find it's better fuel efficiency, uh, more fun to drive, and you might be able to just get one cheaper. And I like all of those things. So you're gonna have a lot of fun. Let it talk to you. I've got some other videos on shifting, clutches, and braking. Check those out. Uh, please comment below with things you might like to see, and I look forward to doing another video in the future. Of course, subscribe. We've got a lot of amazing builds coming up with supercars, race cars, racing adventures, and of course, fun tips like this now and then. So please subscribe, click that bell, and I look forward to seeing you next time.
Very cool thing happening right now at the Packard American Motor Company. They're debuting their very first watch. This is the 1899 Model A. It's a mechanical automatic movement with a beautiful stainless steel case. All the parts are made in Switzerland and it's assembled right here in the United States. If you happen to have a Packard, you can get your serial number engraved right on it, but you guys need to go to PackardAmerica.us. This particular watch is mine. I'm looking very forward to wearing it more. It's frankly very comfortable. One of the best watches I've ever had. But this one's mine, not yours. You can't have it. Get your own. PackardAmerica.us.